Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at set notation so we can answer questions from exercise 2a. So a lot of this set notation stuff we've seen at GCSE, the first one, A intersection B, that's the intersections of region A and B on a Venn diagram. I like to think of it as A and B. So like N, uh, having abbreviated N for and, um, like that. So A and B is how I like to think about that one. The, um, the, in the union of A or B is the union of regions A and regions B together. So it's the whole region of, U and, um, of A and B. I like to think of this as A or B, so it doesn't matter which region it's in, as long as it's in one of the regions, that's fine. Uh, so A or B is how I like to think of that one. And A dash, or not A, is written like this, where it's the region that's everything that's not in A, and if you ever see a dash on anything, that's what it's referring to. It's referring to everything that is not in region A. And we can actually combine all of these three notations here together, and at the end we'll see a question where we do do that. So don't be worried if that does happen. But this, what, the way we want you to think is that these are the regions on the Venn diagram when we start to move into asking probability type questions. So in this question here, a standard question where we have A representing aces and Ds representing diamonds, um, draw a Venn diagram to represent this information. Well, there's only one card that is the ace of diamonds. There are three more aces in the pack. There are 13 diamonds in total. So take away one, you've got 12 diamonds left. Um, and then on the outside, you've got 36 playing cards remaining. They are all of the spades, um, hearts and clubs that are not aces. And this answers some probability questions. So we want to find the probability of A intersection D. So the intersection of A and D is this one card here. That's one card out of a total of 52 playing cards. So that's one out of 52 to start with. So it's a probability of a card being an ace and a diamond. So treating that the intersection symbol here is an and. That's what we've done in this sentence here. So it's an ace and a diamond. The next question is here, is find the probability it's either an ace or a diamond. If it's an ace of diamonds, great, it satisfies both, we don't care. As long as it's either an ace or a diamond, then that's absolutely fine by us. So we can add up these three values here, three, one, and 12. That will give us 16 out of 52 there. So. Um, the region that we were look the reason why we were looking at the regions of Venn diagrams before is because that's what the, that's the values that we're effectively going to be adding up together. Part D find the probability that it is not a so it's not an ace. Well, that's just going to be all the cards that are not aces, and there are forty eight out of fifty two of them. And the next question here is find the probability that it's not an ace and it's a diamond, so it's definitely not an ace, and it is a diamond, so that's 12 cards there out of 52, or in other words, three out of 13. So it was just this region here that were diamonds, but not aces. So it has to not be an ace and be a diamond. Okay, so that's how we answer those types of questions there. Uh, building up the Venn diagram a different way this time, uh, given that the probability of A is 0.3, the probability of B is 0.4, the probability of A and B is 0.25, explain why events A and B are not independent. Well, if we remember back to the first year rules to do with stats, we had this rule here for independence. If it was independence, then when you multiply probability of A and B together, it would give you exactly the probability of A and B. Um, so let's just check to see if that works. When we do 0.3 times 0.4, we get 0.12, which is not the same as 0.25, so it's not independent. If the equal sign was perfect and what we had on the left-hand side was equal to the same as what we had on the right-hand side, then that would be great. Yes, we are independent here, but in this case, we are not independent. Uh, given that probability of C is also equal to 0.2, and events A and C are mutually exclusive, and events B and C are independent, draw a Venn diagram to represent this situation. 
and find this really complicated probability to finish. Well, A and C are mutually exclusive, and if we remember back to the first year definitions of mutually exclusive, it means that their Venn diagrams never intersect. You cannot have event A happen at the same time as event C. And B doesn't really matter where it goes, it's going to go in the middle of both. So this is how our Venn diagram is going to look. You can clearly see here that A and C do not overlap, and that means they're mutually exclusive. We also know the probability of A and B is 0.25. We know the probability of A as a whole is 0.3, so the probability that we have left over is 0.05 to make a total circle of 0.3. Um, we now have to use the information that B and C are independent events. Now we have the probability of B, we have the probability of A, so to work out the probability of B and C, knowing that they are independent, we can use the multiplication rule of independent events. So multiplying these two probabilities together, we get 0.08, and that's what will go in that region there. The whole circle for B must therefore add up to 0.4, so let's go ahead and add that one in. Uh, adding the B one in, we get 0.07, and the probability for C as a whole is 0.2, so therefore the remaining part of that must be 0.12. Do we have any probability left over? Uh, good, yes, we do. All of this probability at the moment adds up to 0.57, so therefore it must be 0.43 on the outside. Right, tricky question here, C. Now, find the probability of A and not B or the probability of C. So let's have a go at that one then. So let's first split it up into its two parts. The probability of A and not being in B. So let's look at A, and we don't want it to be in B, so it's just the 0 0.05 probability that's there. That's what this first part is representing. The probability for C is anything, any probability that is in the circle of C, so that's both of 0.08 and 0.12, so combine that and that's 0.2, and it's the union of both of these probabilities, so therefore we add these probabilities together and we get 0.25. So there we are, that's how we answer those types of questions there. We split it up first into its two parts, and then we took the union of both of them by adding them both together. Right then, your turn to have a go at this question here then. Pause the video and try this question out. Right then, let's have a go at this question here then. Let's draw a Venn diagram first. So we have a bag of 50 counters numbered from 1 to 50. The counters are either red or blue. The counter is picked at random. Two events, R and E, are of the events that the counter is red and that the counter is an even number, respectively. Uh, given that the number, so this N symbol here is the number, given that the number of red counters is 17 and the number of even numbers is 30, so it looks like it's not all of the numbers from 1 to 50 then, it's just some numbers from 1 to 50, uh, with potential repetitions as well. Um, and the number of red or even numbers is 40, draw the Venn diagram. Well, this is a tricky Venn diagram here. I, it'd be great if I knew the intersection of the number of red counters and the number of even counters. I don't know that. So what I'm going to do for now is I'm just going to put an X in there. Um, now the number of red counters is 17 in total, so this must be 17 minus X. And the number of even counters in total must be 30 minus X. And therefore, the combination of all of this, re all of these three regions here, um, red or even, must add up to 40. So I can make myself a little equation. So therefore, I'm going to have 47 minus x equals 40. So therefore, x must equal 7. So let's now redraw this Venn diagram. So it's going to be 7 in the middle seven red counters that are even. It's going to be ten counters that are red, but not even, odd, effectively. And then it's going to be twenty-three counters that are even, and blue. 
let's work out these probabilities now. So part B, part I. Find the number of uh, counters that are red and even. And that's the answer 7. We've already worked that out in drawing our Venn diagram. The probability that it's not red and not even. So that's the probability of the number of counters on the outside. And we forgot to do that bit. So thank goodness it asked us that question. Here we're going to have 30 plus 10. That's 40. Uh, so therefore we're going to have 10 counters that are not either. So that 10 is going to go on the outside there. Find the probability that uh, it's red and even, but not that. OK, so the probability of it being red and even is 7. So red and even not is going to be 43 out of 50. So there we are. That's the final answer to this final question here. Then the answer to there is 43 out of 50. There we are. So have a go at plenty of the questions from exercise 2a. We are going to be moving on to some harder maths to do with these Venn diagram probability type questions. It'd be really great if you could practice on some of these questions here, build up your skills and build up your confidence on these types of questions here before moving on to the next part, particularly those problem solving questions and the exam style questions. Ask your teacher for help if you need any and thanks for watching.